Hey guys. I'm Jerry. I'm Sierra. We're ladies. And we tangent. What time does the parade start? Six. Oh, thank God. Yeah. I was like, imagine we're here and it's just like, oh, no. oh no, we're going to have to fucking bust Fourth these out. Fourth of July. Because I also have to go get my kids for it oh, and hell. try to make it there in time. Oh, hell. We'll see. We'll see if I can do it. Can I tell you something exciting? Please. I just thought about it because I'm drinking the Kathy mom yeah. water, the blackberry lime. Mm-hmm. Guess what? I have blackberries all through my field. Fun. I have fields of blackberries and they're ripening. And yesterday, Brady and I went out and recorded my uh, Q&A. Yeah. I fucking caught a blackberry in my mouth. They're, they literally turned from like a red color. I thought they were red raspberries, but they turned like wow. a deep. They literally look like this. <gasps> and so Fun. I just pick fresh blackberries. Oh, that's lovely. I know. That's nice. I'm just like, fuck. I go, I think I'm going to can. I think I'm going to can. Sure. I got to learn to can now. You might as well. <laughs> Why not? I got the, ba- I got the berries for it. Mm-hmm. Anyway. What's, What's up, up, everyone? everyone? Hello. Hello. How we doing? How I feel like I'm doing? wearing a blanket because my hair is <gasps> oh, a yeah. blanket on my body. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. How you liking it? I love it. Do you? I love it. I do. Yeah. I do love it. I've been braiding it every night. Yes. And I've been oiling it. Oh, yeah. I've been. I. She got extensions if you are not oh, yeah. seeing it. Oh, yeah. And you're just confused listening. Yeah. And actually, it was really healing for me to do. Shout out Elizabeth uh, at Blush. She owns Blush. If you're in the Northeast Ohio area, you should go see her. Um, she's going to have a baby in October. So maybe Aww. you're going to have to probably maybe yeah. wait. <laughs> yeah. Her books are like full until then. But uh, when she was showing me the hair that was going to go onto my head, she's holding it up. And I'm like, what color is that? And then she starts brushing it and it mixes together. And I'm like, that's my hair color. But it didn't look red <gasps> oh, it's like whatsoever. A, it's an optical illusion. Yes. So Until it's blended with it. Yeah. So like, I guess I now understand why people look at forests and they're like, where'd your red hair come from? Right, right, right. Yours looks a little blonder. It's it, almost like ash brown blonde. Yeah. But it's red. But ginger. When it's all together. We decided it's pumpkin chai. Yes. Yep. Yep. So if TikTok wants to pop off and try and do pumpkin chai hair again, maybe, I don't know if they've done it before, but again, just know I have, I have the real thing growing from my head. (laughs) (laughs) Wow. Subtle brand. And then sewn into it as well. (laughs) My hair is gray. So try to, try to figure that out. I do have grays. I bet you can't. (laughs) I do have grays. They're white. But you can't tell because they just look like blonde highlights. (laughs) No. They're just white. They're whites? Way to still brag. I know. (laughs) She's like, actually, subtly. Listen, (laughs) my life elsewhere is on fire, so give me white hair. Okay. You can have it. Or give me death. You can have it, witch. (laughs) Bitch. (laughs) Whatever you need. (laughs) Get on your broom or whatever they say. (laughs) Um, Yeah, I don't really think anything has really gone on with my life. My tits are out. Yeah, I love them. We love to see it. We love to see it. That's all. That's all I have. That's Um, all, folks. (laughs) I got shouted out uh, when I walked across the street by a man, but I'm pretty sure he was gay. And that's the kind of the only kind of men I want shouting at me when I'm walking yes. across the street. Mm-hmm. He was very complimentary, but not in a way that made me feel like I needed to cover up or in I danger. wanted to take more off. <laughs> like, yeah. All right. You Say deserve less, to brother. All. Uh, so, yeah, that was lovely. I loved that. Mm. Um, also, you mentioned today that it was our 250th episode. It is. Except I think you're wrong. And here's why. Somebody messaged me a long, n- not too long ago and showed that we had two episodes that were the same number. <laughs> do? I can't remember. It was like one something. Let me see if I can find it in my messages. Son of a bitch. <laughs> I, I usually try go back. I, I try whenever I'm naming them every like, week. <laughs> Every week I go and I look and see what the last number was. Cause I'll like, I'll guess like last week I was like, oh, oh it's 248. And then I went and looked and it was 249. Damn. I can't remember what her name was, but, um, she did message me. And so last week was 250. Might've been, might've been <laughs> unfortunate. Okay. Oh, you know what though? It's really not the 250th. It's, it would be the one that's labeled 250 because we had done extra ones that weren't counted. Did we? Yeah, because like the one that we did with the guys, the first Valentine's one, we did a bonus and I didn't count that as a number. Ah, so tricky, really, tricky. this is knows. whose line is it anyway? And the numbers <laughs> don't actually matter. That's what we've always Let said. us just celebrate 250. And that's what we're doing right now. And that's what we're going to say. Yeah. So shut up. We're gaslighting you. 
This is the I know what podcast. it is. Let me have my party. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So because of that, which by the way, I just want you to know, I looked down at my phone and it's almost two fifty right now. Very strange numbers. What are they? <laughs> Anywho, um, interesting. Mm-hmm. So I went ahead and took us back to our roots. Mm-hmm. I did a listener stories. I was our gonna white do- white roots. <laughs> no. No, no, we don't want to have no. white, our gray roots. <laughs> Let's go gray. Let's go gray roots. I'm gonna fuck about my white roots. <laughs> at all. Like, no, no, I'd prefer not to have them at all. Actually, yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's true. Oh, I hate it here. Um, so I, I wanted to do some like real scandals, except that you guys are just so fucking funny. And so again, <laughs> I did a mashup because every story I read. I, because I was not just looking for scandals. I just wanted mm-hmm. to read them. And then I was like, these are so funny. I'm going to have to add these. So just so you're aware, we're going to be doing uh, a smorgasburg here of stories. And then again on Patreon, I have a, yeah. a bit for that as well. And also. And another thing. We're still on tour. Well, we're not right now, but we will be. Mm-hmm. Tickets are available. We're going on tour. Yeah, shows are getting close to selling out, people. So if you want to go right now, would be the time. I yep. don't think we have any meet and greets left, but we didn't get hell? we didn't get an updated count. But I'm pretty sure everybody's telling me they can't access them anymore. So oh. I think that we're sold out of meet and greets. That's However, wild. you can still get a ticket, and um, then sometimes people sell their meet and greets because That's they true. can't make it or whatever. Or sometimes so. there's sweet, sweet, sweeties in the crowd who have significant others who don't oh give a my, shit about us. So and then they cute. gift other people randomly. I actually love you know it when what? that happens. They stand by someone in line who's like, I got two meet and greets so we could sit by each other, but he actually doesn't give a fuck to meet them at all. Do you want to yeah. stand with me in line afterwards? And it's so cute. You know what? There so. was a question on the Q&A that I'm putting out that was like, what's the most wholesome thing that mm-hmm. you've seen at a show? And I wish I would have remembered that because yeah. that would have tagged onto my answer. But my what my answer was, was at the Columbus show when um, someone had had such a great time. <gasps> At the show. Our sweet, sweet baby angel. Yes. I love her. And it was very apparent to everyone that they had had a great time at the show. (laughs) And so somebody was just standing waiting for her meeting, meet and greet to be done. And we were like, oh, is this your friend? And she goes, no, but I am going to make sure that she gets home. Okay. Gets home. Okay. Yes. And that to me was like beautiful. That was a whole, that was very wholesome. And I think about it all the time because I'm like, what a beautiful representation of the community we would want yeah. to create. I'm going to make sure she's yeah. safe, gets home to where she needs to be safe mm-hmm. and all of the things. Yeah. Oh, it was so nice. Really lovely. Yeah. Okay, so um, I think, do you want to choose? I have I have quite a bit I can. of options. I also, I was in a bit of a, bit of a way when we first met here today. Mm-hmm. And I've been, I was really excited to tell you about something. And of course, I was derailed, but now I'm back. I feel like I'm getting back on on track. Okay. And what I wanted to tell you is, I have a game I'd like to play with you okay. and Corey. It doesn't have to be on the podcast, just in life. Okay. Okay. Brady and I played it this morning at breakfast. Okay. And what it is, is we just say a word and we say, what is this? What is this is? <laughs> what is this is? <laughs> but it was, a, I, I said to him, what's Boca? And he... He goes, is it a dance? And I go, that's a polka. But no. <laughs> <laughs> and so him guessing what it was oh, okay. was hysterical. Bodice, another very funny one to watch yeah. him guess. But then he would say to me. Do you have me, the cards? Nope. I just, we you made them up m- off the top of our head. So these are not real words. Are no, they, they are. are. They are. They're real words. How do you find them? Basically, what we did was I thought about my skill set and something that I would consider myself well versed in sure. and i would just pick a word from that oh my god that maybe he would car know. things or fucking and that's what they did uh, that's what they did son of a bitch I he would goes never... what's a trot line and i was like that's where that's the line the horse stays on that would <laughs> never <laughs> fucking know i have no that's and fishing though it is fishing. i know trot line it is trot line is you put it out to get the fish right yeah it's, it's like a, a line you drag you... it on the yes. back of the boat yes hell yeah i but do know trot lines he he wants us to do it with me and him and you and Corey. and then oh, i fucking love a trivia game he was I'm like so down we could he goes it could be either us against them and i was like i think it should be me and sierra against the yeah, two of you, you guys because are too competitive together we would me and Corey don't care <laughs> but we, we couldn't be less competitive i don't know i think well i think 
I think I could get Corey to be competitive, but maybe, but I think you and I would have a similar knowledge. Yeah, base. we would have to, we would have to be together. Yeah. But Corey could do medical stuff, but oh, you could do that aesthetic really, stuff. That's true. That's you true. You could do server stuff What's too. Your squalane or <laughs> squalane. <laughs> See, I wouldn't fucking know that either, <laughs> but that's why. What's your squamous? <laughs> he was like, what's a. I don't even know if that's an actual thing. I'm just saying shit that sounds funny. What's a. Oh, had to do with a car. It was a. I knew his would be all car shit. Something shaft. No. <laughs> I was thinking about shafts. That's not it. That's <laughs> not it. It's I don't remember what it is, but it's where you fill up the tire. The air hole. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I like it this way too. <laughs> trying to come up. What's it called? We, you show a thing and then they have to guess. We show them a menstruational cup. <laughs> yeah. You gotta yeah. tell us what it's we called. We could say what's a diva cup and see Corey would know what Corey that was. Corey would know. Though. But I don't think Brady would. No, certainly oh. not. Corey sees mine, not mine personally, <laughs> but he's just seen them in the bu- in the bags. How to put air in your tires? No, I need He'll to know grab what them. It's and called. he's like, "Is this about your period again or what?" I'm like, "Yeah, valve stem." Yeah, I know a valve stem when I see one. <laughs> so he's like, "What's a valve stem?" And I was like, "That's what you put the dipstick down to check the oil." <laughs> and he's like, "No, that's what I would have thought." He's like, "What's an what's an alternator?" And I was like, "That's." I something feel like the engine something to turns turn the to start. It starts the car. That's a starter. Fuck. But the alternator has to do with it. It holds energy in order for the car to start. So I think you have to jump your alternator. That's in order. right. Because whenever <laughs> they were trying to jump my car, they'd be like, I need to know where your alternator is. And I was like, sir, this is the first time I've ever opened this bitch. Oh, it's a mystery in here for me. But that's why it's so fucking funny. I don't know. It was so funny watching him try and answer questions. Because I said, what's traveling? And he was like, Distance over time. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> technically, but not the one I'm talking, talking about. about. Basketball? <laughs> yeah, I was. I was. Just and he goes, Can I have a hint? And I go, No, because if I tell you the hint, you're gonna know what it is. I know. But it was it was really fucking funny to play the game. And I think that we could come up with words that I they have no could. idea what the fuck they are. That'd be really good. I like that. And watching them guess and then also watching us guess. Also Yeah, because guys are good at like three things. It's like taking out the garbage, sausages, <laughs> and fucking cars. <laughs> Not those fucking cars. Those are boy things. I've never seen a guy fuck a car. Oh, I'll really? We watched a different Transformer movie. <laughs> I don't think I've watched Transformer. I'm just kidding, everybody. <laughs> about all of that. I'm about to make all the men mad. But if you oh, were yeah, the one that yelled out at me. Audience, <laughs> not you, baby. I'm not talking to you. Yeah. yeah. But I said, whenever we were talking car stuff, we were talking alternators, we were talking valve stems, we were talking, I don't know. I don't know. Some kind of a slip clutch. Ooh, sexy. <laughs> you tell me I'm not supposed to fuck that? <laughs> I know. I was like, I Why like it th- sound so hot? I like that they came up with like transmission, uh, which I think that's where the slip clutch is or the cl- slip, slip knot. No, it's slip clutch. I asked him what a top knot was. <laughs> that's it. That's it. For a man's bun. <laughs> it's a bun. It's a hairstyle. <laughs> he, he was like, it's a knot. And I go, no. And he goes, no. is something on a boat? <laughs> The more he talked, the thicker his accent got for some reason. By the way, I said something the other day to Corey on my stream. Yeah. And I said something like, your family talks like, oh, because they were trying <laughs> to get. <laughs> I did. But not all of them. He goes, not all of them. Just like Brady. <laughs> I was like, fair enough. It gets Sorry. worse when he's in Rural King. I, and also talking about boats. Yeah. When he says boat. Well, because <laughs> someone like was it. trying to make me do that. That uh, What's that fucking thing that they. Taylor from Creeps and Crimes did it, but it's that sentence. Oh, boiling oil. Yeah. He does it. Yeah, I he know. Boiling oil. I've heard it. Boiling oil. Boiling oil. Yeah, and I'm like, you don't say it that way. And he's like, if I think about it, I won't. He goes, but if you're asking me to say five <laughs> bowls of boiling oil, I'm going to say five, five bowls of boiling oil. <laughs> like, why? Why? But anyway, what I was saying is they're naming car parts like the alternator, the exhaust, the, the valve stem, the whatever the fuck transmission and then dipstick no. for the thing that you put in the oil dipstick what five-year-old the way that? i almost said something and then i remembered the reddit thread and i did it and that's on growth period baby <laughs> period growth no that's on growth of being a better human oh no because what i wanted to say was dipstick i know <laughs> <laughs> i know who that is <laughs> that's dipshit sorry 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 
in fucking, I'm not talking about who you think I am, so relax a little bit. Number one. Yeah. And number two, I'm going to be called a mean person. I, I have Call no me fucking a mean girl. I, I have care. no skin in this game. I just don't yeah. like to see someone hurting my best friend. Sorry if that makes me a bad person. Anyways. Yeah, we, I told Sierra about Reddit today. She's like, is there I anything? don't even fucking go on there. She goes, what Reddit? And I goes, the ladies and tangents one. And she goes, is there anything about me over there on there? I'm like, yeah, it's all nice. They love your stream. They want to they no, know I just read this thing <laughs> about you. And they, did, oh, you they did? tied me into it. They said we both are. Oh, uh, well, and that's why I think that, yeah, I know where it's coming from. But yeah. But it is what it is. I'm not worried about mean it. Girls. My, uh, here's what, listen, I'm, here's what you have to know about me. I am hearing? a mean girl sometimes because I'm a cancer and I'm sorry if you fuck with people I care about in a really mean way. I can also be fair. I'm a very mm. fair person. Mm. I could be genuinely, was I not one of the fairest people kind of yeah. at certain points of this? trying to be very devil's advocate and yeah. I don't like when people do that sometimes but I was yeah and so it's just frustrating then you have to understand if to get me to that point I have to be seeing someone I love getting torn the fuck down repeatedly yeah and then the mama bear in me comes out so if you don't like that I'm I apologize to you I guess but at the same time I expect an apology back and I'm not receiving <laughs> one not from you from someone else yeah from and so many I'm just a, saying many a person and I would also like to say I'm sorry that my emotions get the best of me you know what I would like to say is if you think that's mean if you if you are the person who wrote it and if you you're not sure I mean go kick off in the latest <laughs> just read you it can it's check it out it. it's on there but they put have, it in online for everyone to see yeah we we actually have no affiliation with it. We just lurk there. But if you, I don't, <laughs> if you think that's mean, baby, yeah, <laughs> you, you actually be, don't want to see what is what could be, yeah, what is actually happening. Mm -hmm. And that's what everybody. Oh, they're say they're saying things now. We're not. I promise you, we're not. Anywho, not what could be said at least. So you get to pick because it's your birthday. <laughs> Because I feel All like you right. deserve this. Because guess what? She is having a tough time and life is hard. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> so you get to pick from a that's disgusting. Okay. Um, this is kind of just a heartwarming tearjerker one. Okay. But it also relates to like us. So it could be like a 250 celebration one. Okay. We have a scandal. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be completely honest. My brain did the go away thing with the first two. All I heard was celebrating us 250. That's disgusting. Okay. Heartbreaking. Or, or heartbreaking. Heart oh, no, no. Heartbreak is one thing. My ego's another. I beg you get off Reddit, motherfucker. Motherfucker. <laughs> uh, scandal, heartwarming, that's disgusting. That's all you have to th okay. think right now. Okay, okay, ready? Sleepwalking. Okay. Or, um, a poop story. I want to sleepwalking. I don't even care what the rest are. I want sleepwalking. This is a great one. Okay. What a good opener. <laughs> All of these are great. I'm not kidding. These are, they just keep getting better and better. Actually, I can't say they keep getting, I haven't read so many of them, but the ones I read every time I'm like, God, this uh -huh. winner, 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 chicken dinner, wiener, every single time. Wiener. <laughs> hey ladies, my name is Kayla and my wife's name is Maya. Our pronouns are she, her. Okay. Mm -hmm. Sierra's story about her husband sleep playing with her toes made me <laughs> want to send this story in. Wow, do I have a story for you. Almost six years ago, when my wife and I went to visit a friend in Ellensburg, Washington, we had the craziest thing happen. Our friend had recently moved in with two people that she was dating at the time. A little mm -hmm. polyamory happening. Mm -hmm. When we arrived, we learned her and her partners were into some really freaky, kinky shit. She showed us around their very normal looking house at first, and then she took us back into their shop type garage that was turned into a sex dungeon where they would host some really different kind of get togethers. Were there grapefruits involved? Gra oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> showed that to I my hate myself. I showed that at my nail appointment. I thought you were going to say to my dad. I was no. like, what? <laughs> no, no, but then I did. I did play it for Brady while he was driving, and so he couldn't watch it. All he heard was the sounds. <laughs> and he was like, what is happening during the... It's <laughs> just really bad. It sounds like... It's, Look it's, at my boobs, everyone. <laughs> Google her boogles. It's, it sounds like when Topher... Yeah. <laughs> growls. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's it any kind of sound. You're damn right. Topher's... Uh, 
<laughs> it's Who's their dog? family. It's, it's their family, family dog. dog. Okay. Yeah. I was like, whose dog is it? Corey and Zach, his brother, got yeah. Topher um, when they were seniors, but they it yeah, yeah, stayed yeah. at their family house yeah. because it's like their family pet. Yeah. I think they were they were in high school. Anyways, it doesn't He's a matter. thousand years old. It doesn't He's matter. Old, dude. <laughs> but honestly, acts like a puppy still and He's has terrible anxiety. <laughs> terrible. He just walks around with his paw. In his mouth. <laughs> Have you seen him do that? No, he walks around the house with his paw. In his mouth. He walks around with a slobbery toy and hands oh, it to me, and gross. then looks at me like fucking. He'll throw it. He also is like really, really prote- protective of like babies and anything. and me and, and well anything yeah. new, mm-hmm. anything new. Is like I'm just a little I'm baby, a little baby. <laughs> but like, so when I was pregnant, he would come over and smell my belly when I was like bigger, and he mm-hmm. was like, "There's a fucking baby in there," and they would be like, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> "Stay away from her." And I was like, "Hey, Corey would come to hug me, and he'd be like," <laughs> and I was like, "Hey, it's my husband." <laughs> he'd be like, <laughs> "Grapefruit and all over the place." <laughs> so horrifying. I'm so sorry. Anyways. This dungeon had the craziest type of contraptions that you could think of with writing on the walls of the people who have come to visit. Whoa. Very fun. Reminds me of some of the uh, comedy, comedy clubs? clubs we've been to. <laughs> there you go. Um, I think it's like that, but with sex. So, <laughs> it was something we had never in our lives thought we would be seeing. Our friend asked my wife if she would like to test anything out to see if she would like it because we have never been exposed to anything like that. We're honestly pretty vanilla. I think mm-hmm. like not in a sex way, but in like a, well, you'll see. I know not in a sex way because I know what happens. I've read this before. <laughs> <laughs> when my wife said yes, she gripped onto one of the structures they had and our friend whipped her with a flogging whip. So one of those. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. Mm-hmm. Unbeknownst to me, I was too focused on all the crazy writing on the walls. <laughs> I love that she's, <laughs> she's reading, reading, and her wife is getting whipped the, the shit beat out of her. <laughs> um, my wife figured out pretty quickly that that wasn't something she was into. <laughs> Our friend took us back into their home where we started drinking and playing beer pong. I got tired pretty quickly, so I put myself to bed while they stayed awake drinking and playing beer pong. Can I ask a question really fast? Go ahead. If you're someone who does like being flogged is yeah. that what it's called mm-hmm. i'll answer this for you <laughs> okay <laughs> what do you feel in your body when when you've been flogged pain and you like it that's it's exciting oh the excitement of it's the, the pain. adrenaline got it yes got it got it got it yeah okay. yeah you because just take those 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 well this is me from a from a worst time in my life yeah uh, I don't think I would like it anymore i don't think i'm quite the mask well, i once was the reason i ask is because they're like she figured out pretty quickly she didn't like it yeah and I'm like, i think some well, people associate pain with like ow, ow i don't that like hurt. that don't do that but some people are like "Ooh, do it again <laughs> you know what i mean yeah so I like that pain okay. i have before noted um but mm, speaking of a- sex and pain as soon as like i got my hair mm-hmm Brady went like this and he no, just you kinda, can't. I know. No, I know. You sure can't. We're, th- we were just standing in the driveway just and he joking. was like, so can I just, and he just tugged on it. And I go, no. No. And actually. That is attached to real hair and it fucking hurts. Well, not only that, but I was warned about it mm-hmm. by the girl who put him in. Yeah. You guys already know her name. But anyway, she's like, hey, just so you know, I've had people call me and they're like, my extensions came loose. Can you fix them? And then I know why they're loose. I know why they're loose. And they tell me once they come in. <laughs> That yes, in fact, it was due to sex. <laughs> I'm like pulled. noted. You She's like so don't don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that because we know and then we talk about you when we. I was <laughs> like, you can pull like this top guy, but I don't know that just you're gonna. Just the straps that are real. <laughs> yeah, just this two little, guy. two little guys these, on top. These front wispy bangs. <laughs> you can just. <laughs> you really need to. Yeah, that really does something for you. <laughs> Um, <laughs> sorry, I'm just imagining being on top of someone and they just pull your pants <laughs> <laughs> like they're trying to close the curtain. <laughs> Shh. You, or like they think that that's going to like make you move a certain way, like they're controlling it. Ratatouille the way- me. <laughs> <laughs> what that? That's funny. I remember laying in their guest room bed trying to put myself to sleep for what seemed like an eternity. About an hour went by when my wife decided it was time to put herself to bed. Or so I thought. My wife gets in bed and she falls asleep. I'm still laying there on my tummy. This is important. (laughs) When suddenly she pulls herself on top of me and starts licking my back. (laughs) Oh, no. Like venom. (laughs) I'm in such shock. 
I don't know what to do. <laughs> so I just stay stiff and quiet for the whole two minutes. <laughs> two whole minutes of back licking. Up and down. Hot. So hot. I thought maybe it was something new that she wanted to try or something she learned from the dungeon. <laughs> dungeon she's like they had this lollipop technique i'm about to do it on your back do it to your back (laughs) but i couldn't bring myself to say anything because it was truly the oddest thing i've ever experienced (laughs) i just stayed there so still so she wouldn't think i so she would think i was asleep until she finally gave up rolled over and passed out (laughs) the next morning we woke up and i saw her do a big stretch normal as can be (laughs) i asked her hey do you remember licking my fucking back (laughs) To which she responded, no, what the fuck do you mean? (laughs) I then told her what she did to me. She was confused and horrified. She really thinks that maybe she was possessed by something in that crazy sex dungeon. (laughs) Why is that where I would jump as well? I'd be like, something in the sex dungeon (laughs) got me. Oh, no. It's like that fucking thing, which is like. But that thing back where it came from, or so help me. Which is like, I put my hand down and my dog licked it, but my dog wasn't. He was dead the whole time. (laughs) So what was licking my hand? My wife. She was (laughs) under the couch again. She Get out from underneath the couch, honey. She lick is. my back. <laughs> my neck, up here my back. Lick my back for me. <laughs> oh, shit. She has absolutely no recollection of this experience at all. Here we are 11 years later, married, and, no- and nothing like that has ever happened again. Sierra, if you're reading this on the podcast or just reading this at all, I hope it makes you feel a little better about your story with Corey playing with your toes. <laughs> <laughs> Love you guys so much. Thank you for getting me through my weeks. Hashtag fuckable bunny, Maya and Kayla. Oh, <laughs> oh I did full. I hope you're cool <laughs> with me using your full fucking name because I did. I'll cut it out. They put it in. Maya and Kayla. Government names. Government names. <laughs> oh you gotta love it good story good story okay so while i was looking for these i really tried i really tried to veer away from what we're known for oh no and yet i ended up with three shit stories (laughs) (laughs) and one of my own here we go i shit my pants this last week you did i I almost did today i did about so here's the deal I want to say it was this time last week mm-hmm. uh, around, yeah, Saturday night, actually, because I did a stream and I was like not doing well. Right. I had no makeup on. I was like, guys, I'm here, but I'm feeling rough. And I think what was happening was I was having a Crohn's flare because I, uh, I started getting those sores in my mouth. Yep, and yep, yep. I was literally like volcanoing. <laughs> okay. Yes. <laughs> and, but yes. just like before that, horrible pain. <laughs> yes. That yes. kind of belly. All day. Got bubble guts. Yes. So, but that passed. And then I think it was like Tuesday, maybe. It was Monday or Tuesday. I'm just hanging out. Everything is fine. I feel fine. I'm uh, working on, I think, editing either one of mine or one of our yeah. Sims things. <clears throat> and uh, just on the computer. And I feel it. And I'm like, oh, I'm going to have to poop soon. So. Going to get that out of the way. And then all of a sudden it was like, "Eh, maybe I should go soon. (laughs) So I stand up. You know where my computer is from my downstairs bathroom. Five steps away. Like it's very close. Yeah. As I'm walking there. Okay. I'm like, oh, I should start maybe undoing my sweatpants because I had it tied. And then as I start to pull them down to turn around, it's just coming. (laughs) (laughs) Your ass says, say less. I was like, we're here. And it's happening. Say absolute less. And I go, oh my God. And then I called Corey and I was like, hey, I pooped myself. I pooped. I am on speakerphone and I hear Noah go, you pooped your pants. <laughs> and I was like, well, I didn't know I was on speaker. Can you get the 12-year-old out of my place? I feel like I'm going to get bullied for this. But he did it. They were both very good. nice. And I was like, so I'm fine, but just... um." I need you guys to leave so I can throw this in the laundry room and get new underwear. And I don't want to see either of you in the face. <laughs> don't the look idea. me in the eye <laughs> ever so. again, actually. So that happened. Um, I had to poop today at Bob Evans. Mm-hmm. Schmob Evans. Yeah. Okay. Schmob Schmob Evans. <laughs> and, but before that, I, you know, Brady and I are playing that game where we're guessing things. Mm-hmm. All right. And I'm drinking one of their cold brews and he's like where is your energy coming from and i was like this yeah. and also that's where this shit's about to come from i went to the bathroom it was just like a preliminary thing i was like i'll get a pee out and maybe if something needs to break free it can here but it should get me through the rest of the time nothing happened but when i went to wash my hands <laughs> i knew that i was 
um bouncing off the walls from the coffee yes because i was giggling to myself yep. mm -hmm. and i it had one of those automatic soap dispensers so fun i put my hand underneath it nothing happened oh whoa. i put my hand underneath it nothing happened i like rub it like it's a person <laughs> and i was like tickle, tickle, tickle. anything happened nothing and so then i <laughs> i go huh, and i go really fast like you're and then it worked. But I moved so fast that, that then it just, just plops down. <laughs> fucking yeah. dick. Dude. So then I scooped it off the counter and like I washed my shit. hands with it. I feel like it does that on purpose. And then I just bit. was, I felt like such a silly little bitch giggling to myself alone in the Bob Evans bathroom. You know what? Don't feel like that. Because here's a story that I think you'll enjoy. And it is titled, How Your Poop Stories Taught Me to Love Myself in a Home Goods Yesterday. <laughs> I, hey, you know what? I think entering places like Home Goods, Joanne Fabrics, mm -hmm. Marshalls, the oh, lights it's... in there. There's there's something I think you look it up. <laughs> there's a reason you poop there. You shit there. Yes. No, it makes me go every time. Mm -hmm. I don't trust that place. Mm -hmm. This maybe the candle smells. I don't know. I think it's. I think I read somewhere the aromas that it's the lights could be the lights. Those are very fluorescent lights. Yeah, and it, they scare the poop right out of me. It's triggering <laughs> because my bowels are like eject. Truly, as somebody who has had seizures in the past, there are times with those lights where I'm like, I actually can't be in here because <laughs> they are flickering and I, I got to go. <laughs> this might set me off. This could arguably be a quote, do you stand by that? Because like, do you stand by telling us your shit stories? But yes. really, it's an avenue for me to tell you my shit story. <laughs> Oh, by the way, I just want you to know, and I'm not talking specifically about this one, but I did. These were all so good that I read most of them out loud to Corey at the other, like throughout the week as mm -hmm. I was going through them in tears. Some of them, I'll tell you the one when we get to it, that I was fully in tears. But this was another one that I couldn't get through without laughing. And he was like, these people are fucking foul. <laughs> and I was like, these are my people. And he was so like, foul. no, he said it in a way that was like proud almost. So mm -hmm. like, this is fucking foul. And I was like, yeah, it is. Okay. So to preface, I swear to the good Lord, Dolly Parton, that I am fully sober <laughs> while sending this, but I've been home alone all day and I'm a little feral. <laughs> so I'll keep this short and sweet. Unlike the length of my shit. <laughs> oh, hell. Oh, hell. Yesterday. I, by the way, the amount of these stories that happened this fucking last two weeks is phenomenal. Impressive. Because this says yesterday and they sent it in. Oh, I guess it wasn't the last two weeks. This was sent in June 12th. Still okay. pretty relatively in the Recent. last month. Yesterday, I was in a home goods thinking a new lamp would fix my debilitating anxiety about the ever impending unknowable doom of the future. Mm -hmm. And I guess the doom I was feeling was actually the most explosive liquid hot ass juice that has ever ejected itself. <laughs> from my body mm -hmm. she was gurgling and churning and i thought maybe it can wait but whatever they pump into the air at home goods entered my bowels through osmosis or maybe i touched the wrong pillow or something because i suddenly was either going to shit myself in private or shit myself in public <laughs> <laughs> yeah the entire time i was waddling to the bathroom this is in parentheses which i could not find <laughs> That's All always caps. how it is. Always. Why do they fucking camouflage those doors? Mm -hmm. For what fucking reason? Yep. They need a big arrow. Truly. Trying to keep my ass cheeks closed to maintain a seal th so the hot shart fixing to make an <laughs> early exit would stay inside. I was comforting myself by thinking, quote, you know, if I shit myself in this home goods, at least I'm not alone. Jerry and Sierra have shit themselves before, <laughs> and I love them for that. So I have to love myself, too. <laughs> You do have to love yourself. And then I walked into the men's bathroom and traumatized some porcelain. <laughs> and I probably burned some of my own asshole hair off. <laughs> also, you should know, as a non-binary person, I have the privilege of peeing in the women's bathroom like a proper little pisser while I take my shits in the men's bathroom where that stuff belongs. <laughs> hell yeah that's so funny hell yeah sure my human rights are up for debate but i pass just enough as either gender that i can determine which business to do in which bathroom based on my morals alone you know what that's how they should be divided up it shouldn't be men and women it should be piss and poop i agree do you have to piss go here do you have to shit go, go over here. there get out of here this turned out longer than I planned. And yes, I am still sober, unfortunately. <laughs> Could you imagine watching someone enter a piss or a shit bathroom? <laughs> we ain't know. Yeah. She knows. <laughs> she knows. <laughs> How are they going to know? <laughs> They're never going to know. It's been a day since this event and I'm still farting hot. 
<laughs> hopefully when you read this, I will be farting normal. <laughs> but if I'm still farting hot, it's okay. <laughs> because you guys normalize that shit. Pun intended. <laughs> Anyways, thank you for the solidarity. As usual, you fuckers are great. It helped me feel less lonely. Blah, blah. You know the drill. <laughs> and it says in parentheses, I say this with love. Farts and all. Ollie, 23, they, Aww. them. Use my name on the pod. I dare you. <laughs> Ollie, I love you. Is it I, E, or Y? Or just I? I, E. I love you. I know. And by the way, this is not the first Ollie or Oliver that we will come in contact with, just so you know, in these stories. It's a I real knew I theme. shouldn't have given Oliver access to an email. It's a real theme. This is a five-year-old um, writing stories <laughs> in about shitting in a home goods. <laughs> no, but I'll tell you what. Tell me. Forrest, I think I told you this, prefers to shit outside. I think yeah, I've talked about this oh man, before. He sure does. But did I tell you I watched him do it one time? I don't. I was folding laundry in the breezeway, <laughs> and I just happened to look over, and he's squatting, hands on his knees, poop hanging out of his ass. Good. And I'm like... Forrest, what are you doing? No. no. I said, you can't do this because Hazel eats it. Yeah. And her breath stinks then. So please stop <laughs> so shitting. She licks us with that mouth. <laughs> yeah, please stop shitting in the yard. And so I had to have a conversation with him the other day because he's like, I have to poop. And I was like, then go to the, go to the toilet. And he's yeah. like, no. And I was like, you have to go to the toilet. You can't poop outside. And I said, do you know why you can't poop outside? He goes, because Hazel Basil eats it. I'm like, yeah. And also because you're a person. <laughs> You're please, not an animal. Please being. shit in the toilet. It will attract bears on the new land. <laughs> when I tell you, I don't actually know if that's true, but I feel like probably a couple be. days ago when it was storming. You remember that when your beautiful rainbow happened? Oh, that was a beautiful rainbow. This kid went out in the storm and shit in the yard. Why? Why? The toilet was scarier to him <laughs> than the thunderstorm. I do not know. He came back inside and he goes, I pooped. And I was like, in the rain? And he goes, yeah. And I was like, where? Why? And he goes, I'll have to show you. And I'm like, not right now. You're not. No. I'm not going in the rain. <laughs> so I was like, ass. So we're still working on that. We're still we working get there. One yeah. day, one day we'll get there. This is a scandal. <gasps> I miss scandals. I know. And this is a fucking good scandal. Give it's a tea. family scandal. You know what I love and I've mm -hmm. thought about is that we have friends who have podcasts. And I know that one of them has shared their story as if it was sent by someone else. One time, I might fuck around and do I that. I fuck around and do that. <laughs> I might fuck around and do that. I think you should. Mm -hmm. Then we can stop getting yelled at. <laughs> I have a few of them. And, and like, not, not all of them are even about me. Some of them are about, That's like. That's what I mean. Not even us. Shut up. But also about us, too. I mean. You don't know. You'll never know. You'll never I'll know. never tell. But this one isn't about us. <laughs> that I know for sure. This is called My Shrek Ass Looking Sperm Donor, The Almost Felon. Here we go. Are you ready? <laughs> sure am. <laughs> hey, ladies. My name is Emma. She, her, 25 years old. This is a tale about my biological father and the dumbest thing he's ever done. This story is so fucking good. Are you ready? Yeah. We are not on good terms, and I cut him out two years ago on my birthday when he refused to accept me as a lesbian because he thinks it's a sin. Mm. That being said, I don't feel bad about sharing this story because I know for a fact that what he did with his is not only frowned upon by his God, but also by the United States government. For the purposes of the story, and also because he looks exactly like the Green Ogre, let's call him Shrek. And then they attached a photo at the bottom of him beside Shrek <laughs> so that we could see. <laughs> It's very good. It's like if Shrek was an accountant. <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> yes. <laughs> at the time that this story takes place, my sister and I were fairly young. My mom was a stay-at-home mom at the time, and Shrek was a mechanical engineer at a huge company. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. I won't name names, but let's just say this company has been under heat lately for their aircrafts having major issues, mm. and also it rhymes with schmoing. <laughs> As you know. Yeah. Yeah, I don't love that because that's one we take quite often. Yeah, well, what are you going to do? Shrek was, <laughs> I get us. I don't love my options. <laughs> Shrek was actually pretty good at his job and he climbed the ladder quickly. He ended up working in a high security top secret department commonly referred to as the black hole. 
I mean, they had to have intense background checks. The black swamp. <laughs> <laughs> yes. They had to have intense background checks and couldn't have their cell phones with them at all while on the job. That's how fucking crazy this is. Okay? He's having an affair. That's what that sounds like. <laughs> okay, wait. Because, hold on. Am I a psychic a little bit? No. I'm going to tell you <laughs> that I am a little bit psychic. Well, you might Because be. I was... But you are wrong here, but it's fine. Okay. I was sitting freaking out because I'm like, I ran out of pull-ups and I need one. Mm-hmm. I need one fucking pull-up and I've run out and it's bedtime and I, I can't leave because one of them is already asleep. Right. And then I sat down on the chair and in my brain, a like photo video i don't know a live photo let's call it that a forest <laughs> closet opening and an entire box being in his closet <gasps> popped into my head and i was like no fucking way went into forest room opened the closet an entire unopened box of pull-ups in there wow i know it's really cool anyway thoughts are crazy <laughs> thoughts are crazy aren't they wild but the reason why i was like ooh, ooh maybe is because that's exactly where you're going exactly where my brain went and then i could not have predicted where the story was actually going to go <laughs> okay, but I could you not went been... where my brain was going. okay 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 just so you know but heads up we couldn't be more wrong we, <laughs> literally because there's no way to guess what's about to happen okay well now wanna well you can't <laughs> I promise <laughs> don't don't initiate trigger my <laughs> What's that called? Competitiveness? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I mean, they had to have intense background checks and couldn't have... Okay. You know the kind of stuff that makes a fragile ogre's ego absolutely massive. Mm -hmm. (laughs) One thing about schmoing, at least at the time, is that they have amazing health benefits. Um, They had... I'm sorry. They had amazing benefits. At one point, schmoing's health insurance company partnered with a well-known research-focused hospital system whose name is also a condiment. The way I thought it was ketchup... It's not. I, I figured it out. You'll get there. Oh, <laughs> you got it. Yes. <laughs> to send out preventative health care. Made by eggs. Yes. <laughs> yes, you're right. Got it. They say it later on in this. So okay. I think it's okay. Shmeo. Shmeo. <laughs> but I was like, shmetchup? <laughs> Shmustard? <laughs> Maybe shmustard. Shmellish? <laughs> I'm trying to think of other condiments. Those are the best ones. <laughs> Shmeena butter? <laughs> is that a condiment? <laughs> what do I think? What do I think? The only thing that are- butter is <laughs> The only things that are condiments that go on hamburgers. But there's a p- place local here that puts shmeena butter on I've hamburger. I've had peanut butter on hamburgers, and it's fucking you good. what? P- shmeena butter. There it is. Okay. <laughs> and <shmelly. laughs> How about a sweet butter smelly sandwich? <laughs> Peanut butter. Sweet butter. Smelly. Sweet butter. Hamburg. Sweet butter. Sweet butter jelly and a baseball bat. My bird just almost shut off. It was like, you're done. You're done. Okay. God, we got to get through this. Sorry. 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 Heavy on the Sorry. tangents Sorry. today. Sorry, Dad. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Uh, ba, 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 ba. Whose name also. Got- okay. To send out preventative healthcare questionnaires to schmoings employees okay Mm -hmm. if you completed the survey and you entered your employee number and an email address you could get a 25 five dollar gift card of your choice delivered to your mail stop at work around this time shrek ended up working on a large project in his department that required him to stay late frequently one day one of shrek's co-workers called the house in the afternoon asking if shrek was okay my mom told him she assumed he was in the other building for the day as they did often float between buildings the coworker seemed to accept this, but the call raised suspicions for my mom. I'll let you in on a secret here, folks. This is foreshadowing. I fully still was going with affair here, okay? Mm-hmm. I'm going with this guy is stealing other people's information to get money from the Schmeo people. Okay, here we go. Hold on. <laughs> Shrek came home that evening and everything was normal. We all went to bed. He got up the next morning and left at the house at the same time he always left for work. At some point that day, he called my mom saying, I need you to take the girls to your parents' house because I have something to tell you and you're going to want to yell. My mom immediately asked him what he did. Why I got chills during that. And if he lost his job. Uh His response, I got a little carried away. Remember those gift cards from earlier? As it turns out, Shrek had heard rumbling around the black hole that a lot of employees didn't really care to fill out the survey for just a small gift card. A small gift card, he thought to himself. All you need is your employee ID and an email, and it's free money. So this idiotic ogre of a man took it upon himself 
to create a little work project. All those nights he'd been staying late, quote, working, were actually spent filling out the survey under the names of other Schmoeing employees. He created a spreadsheet to keep track of all the various email accounts he needed to open on their behalf. Okay, this is crazy. Whose employee ID he had already used as all of the employee IDs were available to everyone in the employee directory and what gift card he had ordered. And then he would put a slight misspelling in the employee's name so that when it arrived in the mail to Schmoeing, he would recognize it when he saw it in one of these six separate mail stops that he was monitoring daily to try to find these gift cards. <laughs> this man. <laughs> wait a minute. It gets crazier. I feel like I, I saw it was going here. However, oh, yeah. oh, it gets crazy. There's no fucking way that this man was working for this company at that level and needing gift cards. Okay. Okay. Well, hold on. Where did he create the spreadsheet, you ask? Shrek, the criminal mastermind, kept this spreadsheet on his work computer in the high security department that had top secret sensitive information such as federal contracts with the military and more at some point the mayo clinic notices that they've been getting numerous surveys submitted from this exact same ip address because of course you fucking idiot they send this information to the authorities because guess what, folks? Mail fraud is a federal crime. So one day while Shrek is at work. Why do I have chills? <laughs> I was fucking maybe, kicking my feet reading this. <laughs> maybe because I know someone <laughs> who might have done this. I literally thought the fucking same thing. I thought the exact same thing. I'm not kidding. I am not kidding you. Um... So one day while Shrek was at work, who comes up to his desk? The FBI. The Federal Fucking Bureau of Investigation came to Schmoing, went through his desk, confiscated his computer, and Shrek was escorted out Over of the building. Over gift cards, you big fucking idiot. Out of the building on unpaid leave until they could figure out what to do. So what did Shrek do at this point? You guessed it. He went home to my mom, who was still suspicious about the phone call she'd gotten earlier that day. He pretended everything was normal, got up and went to, quote, work the next morning that he was fired from, mm -hmm. and later called her to say he'd gotten a little carried away. So After that day, he wasn't even working when he called no. her. No. Sir. Sir. Ladies, I beg of you to do me this honor, and I'm going to let you do it because I did it. The first time, and now I know the answer, and I was not correct. So, wager a guess. How many times do you think he could have filled out this survey? How many gift cards could he have gotten? Lock your answers in now. I said 80. I'm going to say 2,500. Okay. Wow, that's fucking crazy. <laughs> that's <laughs> insane. <laughs> It's not that much. Okay. <laughs> Holy shit. You went fucking so big. <laughs> I went big because I'm thinking Schmoing is a huge company. It is. But that's so much. As Shrek is confessing everything, he finally admits just how carried away he had gotten. Again, I thought like 100 was crazy. Maybe I say 2,500 because this is our 250th episode. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that number is just up there. Yeah. My badass poetic mother looked this man in the eyes and coldly informed him, quote, you threw our future in the toilet and flushed 487 times. Almost 500. He filled out. 487 times. 487 That's gift 487 cards. 487 employee IDs taken from the directory. 487 new emails that he had to create. 487 names. He had to misspell so that he would see 487 em envelopes with 487 gift cards in them, each worth $25. I'll do the math for you, ladies. That's $12,175. All laid out and organized on a spreadsheet on his fucking work computer. <laughs> you work for Schmoing. What? <laughs> the, the CEO of Schmoing? Makes $32 million. Right. $32 million. You're working for the private sector of that? As a where fucking you, engineer. Where you have engineer. access to government contracts for the fucking military? You're making money. And you threw it away for twelve grand. 
for in gift cards. <laughs> you have to spend those at specific locations <laughs> under certain conditions. <laughs> the fuck is wrong with you? That's so crazy. Oh my god. You know what? It's almost no. Never mind. Mm-hmm. 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 That's okay. My grandma said, "If I don't have anything to <laughs> say, I don't say anything at all. Say it at all. No matter what they did. You know what happens is people just get a little itch." And they think they can get away with some shit. But guess what? There's track records. There is. There is. Always a, tra- there's a, a paper, paper trail. trail. There's, there's a, a paper, paper trail. trail. Especially nowadays. Everything is online. Are you kidding me? Especially with automatic logins, you dumb fucking idiot. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you got that far? <laughs> no. Okay. I'm talking about him. Okay. <laughs> I, that's not me. I didn't say. I didn't say a fucking word. I'm saying this man's a dumb fucking idiot for leaving a paper trail on a computer that somebody could access very easily with information that was very easy to find. Ultimately, (laughs) ultimately Shrek was fired from his job and narrowly avoided serious criminal charges by going through a probationary period. While he didn't do prison time, he did fumble the bag of my hottest hell mother. She divorced him quickly and moved on with her life. Because I'm in love what? with your mother. Yeah. Oh, and she's hot. She sent a picture. I think that's your mom in the picture. If it's you, you're also hot. <laughs> if it's both of you, hot, you got hot. great fucking jeans. <laughs> great Let me just jeans. tell you. Despite Shrek. Well, they say that here. Maybe someday someone will point out to that ogre that the Bible says to take the log out of your eye before pointing out the speck in someone else's. Because I don't really think my love of another woman compares to breaking the eighth of his 10 precious commandments 487 (laughs) times. Because by the way, you were fucking stealing. You're stealing. There's no commandment that says I can't fuck a woman. But there is one that says thou shalt not steal or whatever the fuck. Yeah. (laughs) Is that what it is? Mm Mm-hmm. Commit thou thou shalt not fumble my hot ass mom. Thou shalt not be a fucking lying bitch. (laughs) We should come up with our own commandments. I want to. Ladies and command (gasps) gents. Ladies and command (laughs) gents. We put it on a shirt. That's a fucking good idea. That's a fucking good idea. In the meantime, thou shalt not fumble the baddest bitch, dude. (laughs) Hell yeah. Be so fucking just ten times. In the meantime, I'll sleep peacefully at night, knowing we are all better off without him anywhere near our lives. <laughs> that part. <laughs> to end this on a happy note, my mom is now happily remarried to a- my amazing stepdad. She is my best friend, a badass breast cancer survivor, and is even so close with my fiance that she is going to officiate our wedding next year. Mom, mom fucking is the shit. I love you, mom. She knows I'm sending the story in. And she made sure to refresh me on all the deets before sending <laughs> it. Said, Let me proofread that shit. We love a factual queen. <laughs> if you actually made it this far, here's a photo proving that this man really does look like Shrek. I keep this around to remind myself of how lucky I am that my mom decided to press copy and paste when she had me. Thank you, ladies, so much for everything you do. Your podcast has gotten me through so many long drives to and from nursing school, lonely nights when I was in a long distance relationship with my now fiance, and so much more. The parasocial is parasocialing because I truly feel like your friend from afar. And that's a statement to the power and beauty of what you do. Aww. It's an honor to be your fan. And I truly can't wait to meet you with my mom, <gasps> mom at coming. the show in St. Louis. <laughs> ah, so mom, I'm sorry. I called you both so hot. I will do it again in person. <laughs> mom, I need I need to have a little tea time with you oh well, you guys are gonna talk <laughs> we're gonna talk mom <laughs> love you oodles and oodles emma and my mom michelle p.s if you ever make it out to kansas city i'll definitely be there too and here's hold on i think this is a picture of them both so oh my cute God, they're right beautiful beautiful first of all you guys look like sisters Do you that's guys- what I, I was like this could be but i feel like that's mom and daughter they they definitely look alike but yeah. could be literal siblings hell yeah you know what Men are stupid. <laughs> Men are fucking dumb. Okay? Dude. I mean, they're dumb. And we have, I, truly, I have a man in my life that I love, and he'll hear me say that and be like, word. Because he knows it doesn't apply to him. Yes. But he also just has been around so many dumb men for mm-hmm. so long that he's like, well, I don't understand why yes. they are like this. Yes. And I'm like, I know. Uh-huh. Me neither. And you know what? How 
you, I love hearing that mom wanted to like add like fact yes. check and like add everything that she could because there's something to be said about being so fucking wronged by someone yes because what this man did was illegal yes what this man did put was his entire harmful. family in jeopardy that's what i want to say is you did something so harmful and illegal and you hurt so many people but who you hurt the most were the people who you were supposed fuck the people you were supposed to protect yep and you put them in danger you for did what for what for what for what and it's the reason I'm getting so emotional is because I love the fact that there are two strong women here mm -hmm. who are sharing their story, not afraid mm -hmm. of what it means to put that fucking man on blast. Bingo. You can be the bigger I'm going to start my period like tomorrow. Oh my God, I'm <laughs> on mine right now. I swear to God, I started two days ago, dude. <laughs> oh my god i'm so, so sick <laughs> so yours makes you sad mine just makes me fucking angry i am irate well, when i for get you right when now when i get angry i cry yeah. and that's what's annoying because it used to happen when i would get in fights with like my mom yeah, yeah, <laughs> or my dude. sister yeah. and then i look like a bitch and i'm like no i'm crying out of anger <laughs> okay I'm fucking mad right ignore now. these tears focus on the words <laughs> focus on the, the madness <laughs> yeah Listen to the words that are coming the, out of my mouth. The madness behind this. <laughs> no, but truly, that's I. You can say all you want about whatever you want about things. Also, here's the other thing: is anybody's allowed to change their mind? Anybody is allowed yeah. to take the high road and then realize that once they're taking the high road so long that the person is underneath beating the fucking bridge <laughs> out from underneath them, that maybe they should go back onto the ground. Guess you what? You have a fucking you ground made fight. <laughs> okay. <laughs> hey, you destroyed this road I was trying to walk on. I was trying so to I build this I'm road down here now. Over you, and now we both have to be down here. <laughs> that sucks. And guess what? But maybe you should stop sledgehammering our fucking road. And I promise you're gonna wish I hadn't come down here. No, it's not gonna be good. I'm gonna shit all over this road. <laughs> <laughs> I have valid shoes. <laughs> Speaking of, we have a bit of a. I like to call this a scandal, but I also like to call this a poop mystery. <laughs> this was the story that I read out to Corey that had us both in tears laughing. <laughs> oh, no. I just want you to be aware of that. This is so fucking good. A miss shittery? Yes. Okay. Here we go. Are you ready? Mm hmm Hi, ladies. My name is Oliver. <gasps> Feel free to call me that, but I will use pseudonames for the other characters okay. in my story. I'm sorry for how long the story is, but I hope you get a kick out of it. Oliver, I did. And also write 500 more stories because you, it's, <laughs> you have a calling. It's fucking gold. Our poop mystery story is set in my parents' unfinished basement of their lake house. Okay, Rich. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so you're wealthy. <laughs> you have money. Generational wealth. Oh, I saw something that was like, hello, I'd like Just to kidding. trade in my generational trauma for generational wealth, please. <laughs> please. <laughs> please. Um, I was 16, and then parentheses, I am now 23. Okay. And my friends, Kevin and Luke, these are pseudonyms, uh -huh. had... Sound hot. What? They, they sound, sound hot? hot. <laughs> Luke is a... An objectively hot name. I'm not kidding. Right? I think that I don't What's know the other that one? I've, Kevin. Kevin is a bad. <laughs> I've met some Kevin. hot Kevins and I've met you some not hot Kevins. Kevin but is Luke, Luke's best friend. Yeah, who, like is funny. Is funny. <laughs> He's got a personality. Kevin's funny. <laughs> you're like Luke. I can't obtain. I can't get him. But no, Kevin, you're funny. Kevin, I can get Luke. I've, I don't know that I've ever met an unhot Luke. Anyways, yeah, Corey's also very hot and funny. Okay, I just <laughs> they need that to be known. And I call him Luke. <laughs> And he's that's because he Luke. is not my father. <laughs> <laughs> he's got a friend named Luke, and his friend Luke is hot. That's just true. That's just a fact. Dude, can I say what happened at the bachelor party with Luke? Yes. <laughs> Should we? I don't know. Do people he's know probably who he is? fine. I don't know. I think he's in a different country right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think he might be. So, Luke was supposed to be staying in the I house. I don't know if I'm allowed to say that he's hot. You might have to cut all of this. <laughs> okay. You let me know. Okay. Objectively, he is. No. Hey, hey <laughs> from a standpoint, he's an objectively good looking man. <laughs> Societally. And I, and I would be, Corey would also vehemently agree with I me. I think he would agree. He has. <laughs> and the person who he was fucking on the rocks <laughs> that he had just met the night before in Putin Bay would also agree. So good, dude. She came to my wedding. She was so cool. Really? Yeah, he brought her as a date. 
They like talked. I well, goddamn! I awesome. remember we literally drove someone. Didn't we? Oh, we drove to get coffee that morning, mm-hmm. and we saw him walking back from the rocks, and we we're like, "What are you doing up so early?" And he's like, "I just be fucking on the rocks." <laughs> I don't honestly, mind me. <laughs> like that him. that's some hot shit. That's that some hot, hot person shit. shit. <laughs> it, he literally I was like this is book talk shit. What's happening right here is book talk shit. Yeah. He was walking with his headphones on just yes. like dancing to his own beat after fucking all night <laughs> on some rocks by a lake. You're that's book talk shit. Anyways, you're hot for you're that. Hot I don't 16 know. year old friend. <laughs> I forgot what age of kids we were talking about there. What? Oh no, the kids in this story are 16. Oh, they're I'm not talking about them. They're not that old now. That's true. They're not that old now. Your 23-year-old friends are hot. Yeah. They sound hot. They don't sound hot when they're... No one sounds hot when they're 16. That's gross. (laughs) Get a driver's license. And acne cream. Stat. And like 10 more years under your belt. (laughs) Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's not just because you don't have a driver's license and you have pimples and I won't fuck you. (laughs) There's all other reasons as well. (laughs) Ew. All of that's gotta go. <laughs> all of that's going. Kevin and Luke had come to visit me, and we were all staying in the basement for the week or so they were there. Up until that point, I had never drank, but I planned to start as I was getting invited to parties and things, and I wanted to fit in. I, I gotta practice. Doing, I gotta start practicing drinking. I so want to look what, like I've done this before. So that's what they did. Okay. On the night of the poop mystery, me and my friends decided to sneak up. Oh yeah, you forgot what the fucking thing was about. Here we go. Decided to sneak up to my parents' liquor cabinet and siphon the Captain Morgan spice rum and replace part of it with iced tea from the fridge and hope genius. my parents wouldn't know it is genius. Would notice. Here's the thing, though. Not that I'm trying to tell you how to get away with stealing your parents' liquor. However, if they do put the liquor in the freezer, just know water and vodka or iced tea and Captain Morgan, if it's in the freezer, will freeze and liquor doesn't freeze. That's what you yes. need to know. You will get caught. As the person <laughs> who's gotten caught doing that. Um, they were about the same color, and we also don't drink, don't underage drink. That's bad. Yeah, it's not hot at all. It's not. <laughs> no one's gonna want to fuck you. No, don't do it. You're don't sick. Do it because you're gonna drink poorly. Because you're gonna get pregnant and die. <laughs> <laughs> but you will drink irresponsibly, and you will feel horrible. You just said, you just said irresponsibly. <laughs> I said irresponsibly. You sure didn't. You sure didn't. This is recorded on two different things. Um, Drink irresponsibly. (laughs) Drink responsibly because drinking irresponsibly is pretty baby. (laughs) And that's what I'll tell you for free. (laughs) We're not even doing the funny part yet. Yeah, this, this fucking this fucking episode is gonna last four hundred hours. Okay. <laughs> they were about the same color, and we thought if we took a small portion of it, we could drink the booze, and they could drink the mixture, and they wouldn't notice it was a bit watered down. I thought you were talking about Kevin and Luke <laughs> being the same color. <laughs> Sorry, no. go ahead. The alcohol. Uh-huh. We successfully pulled off the heist and we tiptoed past my parents' bedroom and back down to the basement without getting caught with the water bottles full of straight Captain Morgan. We played drinking games. That's what I'm saying. You're saying you siphoned a little bit off, but you have multiple water bottles full. That That's doesn't sound like a little bit. We played drinking games and drank straight rum for my first ever experience drinking alcohol. Drinking irresponsibly. <laughs> I'm telling you right now. I'm telling you right, right now. now. That motherfucker's <laughs> not doing it smartly. <laughs> that motherfucker is being irresponsible. <laughs> As you may have guessed, this did not end well. Fast forward to the next morning at 4 a.m. I wake up in the shower that was in the basement, the only finished room in the basement, fully clothed in gray sweatpants and a t-shirt. I'm wondering how I got there and my head is throbbing. You drank, babe. That's what happened. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. I decided to take a shower while I was in there to try to wash off the alcohol smell and feel better. When I leave the shower and I walk barefoot back to my bed, I walk past where we were drinking and I step in something squishy. I promptly pull out my phone and shine a flashlight down to see a soft turd on the (laughs) patch of carpet. (laughs) Oh, no. For context, my parents... By the way, this is an unfinished basement, remember? Oh, yeah. My parents had large patches of carpet they laid down over the cement floor so it wasn't so cold to walk on at night. Fair. 
I start freaking out and I wake up Kevin and Luke to ask who shit the carpet. <laughs> <laughs> they both deny it was them. And I have no memory of the night as I had blacked out and woke up in the shower. Uh-huh. We're all turning on each other when Kevin goes to his suitcase next to the turd on the carpet to see a pile of shit inside his suitcase. <laughs> oh, no. Covering his vans. <gasps> Pause. Kevin, why'd you bring a suitcase to a sleepover? <laughs> You're weird for that. They were there for the week. It's a, it's a lake house. <laughs> bring a backpack like a grown-up, okay? You're weird. You're weird. Kevin shit in his own suitcase and it's vinyl. <laughs> Kevin okay. cracked corn and I don't care. And I don't care. And the argument escalates further. We're all pointing the finger at each other. Who put the poopy in, in the poopy <laughs> jar? <laughs> You, Luke, put the poopy in the poopy jar. Not me. Could it be that? Who? It's Kevin. It is Kevin. It is Kevin. No. Hey, if it's Luke, Oliver, and Kevin, Kevin shit the suitcase. You think so? In his own suitcase? He's not even the one that they say that they think it is. Hold on. We're going to get there. You just wait. Okay. You just fucking hold on. <laughs> Shut your goddamn mouth. We're all pointing the finger at each other, but at some point we turn the bl- we turn from blame to figuring the shit out before my parents wake up, come downstairs, smell turd, and then kick our asses. Because <laughs> remember, their parents don't know that they- <laughs> the way that this all escalates and you can tell that it's 16-year-olds figuring yeah. this shit out is fucking hilarious. Okay, ready? Seeing as how we were probably still a little drunk and definitely sleep, sleep deprived, me and Kevin decide to go back to bed to figure it out in the morning. <laughs> Now's not the time for this. I can't. While we're asleep, Luke scoops the turd off the carpet and off and off the shoes to get rid of the majority of it and puts it in the trash in the bathroom. But the carpet still stunk and had a big brown spot on it, so he rolled it up and shoved it in the corner. So it was Luke. Okay, wait a minute. Yes. You're not going to clean someone else's shit up voluntarily. Okay, wait. You just fucking hold on. <laughs> At the time, I thought it was odd that he would offer to clean it up. <laughs> when we wake up, we devise a plan to take the bathroom trash out with the scoop turd in it <laughs> up, to the gar- d- up to the garage where the waste management green trash can was. And while we were there, we would grab an X-Acto knife to cut the carpet in half. And later in the day, we'd take the rolled up poopy carpet out into the lake or onto an abandoned property on the lake and dump it to never be seen again. It's giving me shitting in my own closet. <laughs> what could go wrong? Uh-huh. It's 16 year olds trying to figure this fucking plan out. All goes well, except we need to stash the carpet until the following night because the lake was busy with other boats and we thought it would look kind of murdery to dump a rolled up (laughs) carpet off. (laughs) Fair. The carpet gets stashed behind our boat shed that is hidden from plain sight. But in hindsight, this was where all the guys would go to take a leak so they don't have to go back up to the house. So we go out on the boat, pretend everything is normal while my dad stays back on shore. When we make it back to the dock, he comes out grinning and just simply states, you going to put that carpet back where it came from? Why did I just put that put thing back where it came from? Where from where it You're going to put that carpet back where it came from. I responded that he probably didn't want it back. <laughs> <laughs> You're not going to want me to do that, Dad. I decided to feed my parents the story that I had thrown up on the carpet after drinking. And they believed me. Oh, you were going to throw yourself under the bus. Although bad, it was definitely the lesser of two evils. Eh. Right. How cool are your parents? His are pretty fucking cool. I was going to say, I don't know if I would Yours lie wouldn't and say I puked. Be cool with it because they'd still be like, you were drinking, you're fucked. I think me saying someone pooped on the carpet and we don't know who. Yeah. Would be we could better. go the sleepwalking route. Yeah. But his parents are chill. However, we still needed to get rid of the carpet. So it was decided. You ready for this? I just like how you said his parents are chill. Like you're 16 now. <laughs> his <laughs> parents, parents are cool. Oliver's parents so are, are so we're chill. We're Oliver's house. We're shitting all over the carpet, dude. And we were like basically schnauzers down there. Just fucking having loose on that carpet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They're going to bury my nose in it or something. I, I was just know. down there kicking my feet backwards <laughs> all over that carpet. <laughs> However, this is full family effort at this point, what they decided to do. Are you ready? However, we still needed to get rid of the carpet, so it was decided that my grandfather would bury it at his farm. (laughs) What? Light it on fire, you weirdo. (laughs) So I loaded it into the bed of his truck that afternoon, and he drove off with it. He never asked, and I never told him why we needed to bury the carpet. (laughs) 
grandpa is you're a down a, ass bitch. You're, well, you're down, but you're weird for that. <laughs> I think dude. grandpa's a down ass bitch. Is what grandpa's that is. like, I don't need to ask any questions. Mm-hmm. You need me to bury it? I'll fucking bury it. Bury I'll we'll bury never something. fucking talk about this carpet ever again in my life. <laughs> I'll never find it on my farm. That's what I know. <laughs> never. To this day, we still don't know who shit in the suitcase and on the carpet, but both Kevin and Luke blame me as I was passed out in the shower. They assume the story went like this. I was asleep in my bed and had to shit, so I headed to the bathroom, passing the suitcase and on the carpet and the carpet along the way where I drunkenly shit myself onto the floor. So you then, just waddle walking shitting out your ass? Hold on. Then continued on to the bathroom where I passed out in the shower. But in my head, that makes no sense. Why would I keep going to the bathroom after shitting and not go back to bed? <laughs> <laughs> but the most damning evidence that I believe proves my innocence is my gray sweatpants. They were spotless. Would a person so drunk they shit in their friend's suitcase and onto the floor in the middle of the room be able to do all that without getting shit on his sweatpants or underwear? It's simply not possible. That is simply not possible. <laughs> You're that, right. You know what? If the glove doesn't fit, you, you must, must have quit. quit. That's how I feel. If you ask me, I think it was awfully suspicious that luke cleaned up what he assumed to be my shit while <laughs> i went to bed we were close but i don't think we were that close mm-hmm. i definitely w- wouldn't have done it for him i'm just saying but you know who would have your fucking grandpa dude <laughs> he's your a grandpa down house bitch. so let me know what you think did i shit the suitcase or did luke luke do you have another theory Several years after I turned 21, I was drinking with my parents at the same lake house and I finally fessed up that it was shit and not vomit and told them my all my conspiracy theories. They died laughing and apparently had no idea I had lied. So that was fun. I have pretty cool parents. Honestly, looking back, I don't remember ever being grounded or anything for destroying the carpet, but I did get one hell of a story. I hope you get to read my story and get a chuckle out of it even if it doesn't end up on the poop cast. <laughs> <laughs> no, it did. And that was a great story. <laughs> Fucking phenomenal story. Such a great story. 10 out of 10. Um, I definitely think it was Luke. I, I read that whole thing. And me and Corey, again, it was the first time we were both reading yeah, it so yeah, we yeah. were laugh crying and then Corey goes either luke did it or oliver is a fucking psychopath who is still <laughs> trying to gaslight his friends so much so that he's like i'm gonna send it into a podcast so that i could show you look at these ladies to me i say. think you writing that story and he sending said that it in jokingly proves your innocence i agree because yeah, we all we all collectively said it was luke sorry luke i think uh, but also maybe kevin <laughs> well that's what i was gonna say if i had to rank the likelihood it would be luke, luke kevin, kevin oliver i agree Mm-hmm. And I'm sticking with it. Mm-hmm. That's my man. That's my man. All right, I have two more. This is the that's I was like, did we just one. put them in order of LFO, but it's LKO. Look cool. <laughs> right? <laughs> LFO is had a bunch of hits. Chinese food makes me sick. And I think it's fine when girls stop by for the summer. For the summer. Okay. That's all I know from them. Something, something, crumby a fitch. <laughs> I'm a crumby and fitch. That's it. And if I have one wish. Okay, if you get grossed out by poop things, why are you listening to us, number one? But number two, you should probably stop now. Come back to us in about 10 minutes. You'll get the final story, but this story will. This is the third poop story. How did you make it here? <laughs> I don't know, but this is, this is one that you're rancid. It's a bad one. All right. This is the one that when I said it, Corey goes, you guys are foul. And I was okay. like, hell yeah. All but right. not to say anything bad. Because you're fine and we're here with you. Mm-hmm. Hey, ladies, my name's Maya. Another Maya. Two Mayas, mm-hmm. two Olivers. Wow. Mm-hmm. Or two Ollies, I guess. Yeah. She, her, and I have a disgusting and unfortunate story that happened about 20 minutes ago. They wrote us right after it happened. They're clean. They probably didn't even clean themselves up yet. They're Hold like, up. I well, need you to hear this. You'll. We're going to get there. <sighs> okay. And because of it, I will have to move out of state and run away to live with the Alaskan bush people. <laughs> This morning, I had a nail appointment scheduled to get acrylic nails with bright red gel polish on them. My plan was to get my shit straight because my husband is finally returning from his 10-month deployment overseas in less than one week. He's never going to see you because you got to (laughs) move. I got to get my shit looking good because this tuna box cooter bronze (laughs) hasn't been feasted upon in 7,136 hours and I am going feral. (laughs) Hmm. Tuna box cooter bros. <laughs> <laughs> Acrylics for me are a must have because without them, my fingers resemble that of Vienna sausages. <laughs> okay. That and acrylics keep me from rampantly picking at my skin like a real life tweaker trying to get bugs out of my flesh. 
And then there's a parenthesis that says, I feel like I can make this joke because my dad is one. But if it comes off as offensive, just pretend I didn't say that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> On my way to my nail appointment, I stopped by Starbucks for an iced coffee with oat milk in it. Very specific on the oat milk because I do not tolerate lactose in this house. Mm -hmm. Well, my barista sabotaged me because that coffee was bountiful of lactose. However, I'm one of those lactose intolerance that gaslights myself into thinking, eh, maybe not this time. Mm -hmm. Oh, bitch. This, this time, time and every time. <laughs> when will you learn? So as I'm sitting there, milky coffee already finished. My nail lady has made it to the worst stage we could possibly be at. Possibly? Pro possibly. <laughs> Pro possibly. <laughs> we could possibly be at. One hand is under the light. One hand is cured, right? Uh -huh. So we're waiting and mm -hmm. it's still wet. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. One hand under the light, halfway cured. One hand halfway painted. Yep. And even wetter than the shit I was about to release. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. And that's when it hits me. The drop that I know all of you bitches know. When you feel the hot movement from the inside and it drops into your lower belly. A drop so forceful, it gave me a lightning strike to my asshole. <laughs> and I'm not even on my period. And you feel like you lifted up a little bit. Uh -huh. You're like, I might be levitating on uh -huh. this chair. I sat there for the 20 seconds I had left contemplating my next move. Do I excuse myself to the bathroom and destroy my nails while I rip off my skinny jeans? Try to shimmy my pants down carefully without damaging skinny jeans without damaging. I just said <laughs> without damaging my nails and then simply shit all over myself. Do I attempt the risky move of lifting one cheek and trying to let off some pressure with a fart and then blame the person behind me by making a I smell something horrible, but I'm not going to say anything. I'll just glance backwards as if I'm trying to figure out who it was. Face. <laughs> or do I just sit here trying to squeeze and pray until my hands are dry? And if all else fails, I shit on the chair, pretend I died and that this was just my body's natural, natural release of all function. Yep. Mm -hmm. I've had all of these thoughts before. Mm -hmm. I look at my nail tech with dread. And sweat glazing all over my face. I'm all, I think I'm going to throw up <laughs> on my ass. <laughs> this is a quote. I'm so sorry. I know my nails are wet, but I need to use the restroom. She looked at me like I was a tyrant, but honestly, I did not care. You don't even look back. You just fucking go. Yeah. As soon as she released my hand, I got up and shuffled my way to the back bathroom. Once inside, panic started. I did not even attempt to save the nail polish. <laughs> it was coming in hot in every way you could imagine. Once I got my jeans past my ass, I started to sit. And before my cheeks could even hit that cold plastic seat, it was already coming out of me. And I am confident that the entire nail salon could hear the struggle that was <laughs> happening inside of that bathroom. I started to overheat. Oh my God, this is a naked poop. <laughs> not here, anywhere but here. No amount of pleading with myself was going to help. So before passing out, I kicked off my shoes and socks, took the jeans off of my legs, took off my shirt and bra, <laughs> <laughs> laid them on the sink. <laughs> naked in this nail salon bathroom. Listen, I don't give a fuck if your nail tech is looking at you like you're an asshole. I Do promise you, you, you want me to leave right you now. You want me you to. You're not going to like me if I stay. <laughs> If the walls had eyes, they'd avert them insanely <laughs> fast. This was the most inhumane bullshit that I've ever put myself through. At least 20 minutes pass. My shit stream is just now starting to slow, but it is in fact still audible. <laughs> That's when I hear a knock at the door. It was my damn nail tech asking if I was okay. I meekly shouted back that I'd be out in a moment. Just a minute. <laughs> just a minute. <laughs> But I knew that wasn't true. <laughs> Occupado. <laughs> you're still trying to be like ladylike and you're like, oh, no, momento. <laughs> As you're like, <laughs> oh, hello. <laughs> so bad. <laughs> Flomp. <laughs> As, <laughs> <laughs> As my flow finally slowed, my eyes began to refocus and the heat shivers were starting to slow. Mm -hmm. I look at my jeans. And the waste of them is covered in red gel polish. <laughs> and this is not even the worst part. I finally finished up and I grabbed a good thick wad of the shitty one-ply toilet paper. Throughout this struggle, I completely neglected the fact that I did have acrylics on and there was a good amount of extra length. And I did not make my toilet paper folds long enough. <laughs> I wipe, and as the toilet paper ends, my nails begin. <laughs> I scooped shit straight up under my nails. <laughs> no. 
and I got even more red polish straight onto my hole. <laughs> I'm now gagging, looking at my <laughs> shitty little fingers. <laughs> I'm disgusted with myself. I begin to cry. <laughs> now even more Vienna sausage like. <laughs> While I'm crying. I pull out my trusty Summer's Eve vagina wipes and I try my best to clean my hands. More poop comes. My nails tickled it right out to play. <laughs> Any more in here? One more. Oh, Gucci, 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 Gucci. Finally, I finish. Wipe. And still completely nude, I stand in front of that sink and I cover my hands with at least half of the soap in that bathroom. I scrubbed my hands as if they were going into surgery. <laughs> Finally, I got dressed, my clothes still covered in red polish, <laughs> my nails, not so much. <laughs> Before I even leave the bathroom, I pull $80 out of my purse. I walk out of the bathroom, <laughs> three people are waiting in line. I refuse to make eye contact, for I have sinned. <laughs> Please tell me you just put that money down and left. They were about to each walk into what could only get, be considered <laughs> chemical warfare. <laughs> and see vagina wipes that were covered in red sitting in the trash can. But not my poopy ones. I did flush those. I know you aren't supposed to, but who am I to make a poor employee <laughs> take out a trash bag full of my Hershey squirt? <laughs> As I walk past them, I keep my eyes on the front doors. I don't even look down as I walk past my nail text table. I simply place the cash <laughs> on the table and keep moving. I don't stop until I get in my car and then I drive home in shame. No music, just my own self loathing. The nails are still half done, half done, and not shaped at all. Like they're still extra long. <laughs> oh no. I hope you enjoyed my utter failure at being a functioning human being. I haven't decided if I should simply fast for 48 hours before my upcoming Brazilian wax or just cancel it all. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. And I truly hope that you'll feel special to know that I wrote this to you first before my husband or my group chat. If you happen to read this on the Patreon, I won't see it now as I am poor. <laughs> But boy, you just spent eighty dollars at nails. <laughs> We're done. I We're understand. Done. But rest assured, I will sincerely try to in the future. Don't worry, it's not a main one. You're good. Oh my, love hell. you, ladies, lots. And by the way, I just want you to know that this happened twenty minutes ago, and the date is on my birthday. <laughs> Please tell me, please tell me you took a picture of what your nails look like when I, you left. I want to see them. And send also, it. Send what it did to you us. do? What'd you do afterwards? Like, yeah, how'd you how'd, fix them? How'd you rectify that? Wrecked up. <laughs> Wrecked them. You're Damn near killed them. <laughs> the bathroom, that is. <laughs> what a fucking great story. Wow. Genuinely, I was reading that. And again, that was another one that me and Corey were laughing. I was laughing so hard I couldn't get it out yeah. to tell him because I was like, these are all so fucking funny, dude. That is unreal. So unreal. good. All right. This last one is a heartwarming tearjerker. Amazing. It says, tearjerker praise. You guys changed my life. I felt like this would be good. Aww, it's this a, is a 251. Nice it's a nice yeah. ender. Here we go. And yeah. if you're the person who told Sierra this is an episode 250, shop about Shut it. up. <laughs> it's our 250 now. Yeah. Hey, it's Coraline again here Coraline. with another tear jerking story. I just wanted to say that you guys truly changed my life to the point that both you and Taylor Swift must have access to my brain because you both have the absolute uncanny ability to create things directly related to what I'm going through or what I need to hear at any given moment. Aww. The wishful thinking episode helped me understand why my inner child was screaming at me all the time, because the life I live now is very scary and risky to her. I'm not listening to her rules anymore, and she didn't understand why. Your stories about pregnancy loss made me feel less alone when I was going through my own. Your episode on hoovering finally gave me a word to describe the cycle I was caught in with my mother for years. And the episode you released today on future faking included a single sentence that changed my brain forever and made my entire life make sense in a way that nothing ever has before. And I'm so grateful for that. The sentence was, quote, they think everyone thinks the way they do. When you said it, I felt fireworks go off in my head. It was like that moment entangled when everything comes together and she realized that she was the lost princess. Yeah. Spoiler alert. <laughs> My mother deeply believed that every single thing any person ever did 
was an act of manipulation, an attempt to gain power over the other person or to humiliate them. Mm -hmm. I was once watching Sisterhood of the Traveling Pants and she told me the movie was so ridiculous because two women can never be friends because of this belief of hers. Right. That just, it's all a power. (laughs) Are you well? She's not. That's what, and that's the thing. This belief meant that she saw things like a newborn baby crying because they were hungry, a teenager eating a second burger at a barbecue, someone shifting their weight from one foot to another, a child forming a bond with an adult that isn't their mother, like a teacher or an aunt or even their own father, children crying or asking to go to the bathroom, someone expressing that they're in pain or have an injury, and having a heart-to-heart, honest conversation to fix problems in a relationship as cunning, evil acts of manipulation, deceit, and attempts at humiliating their parents. I never understood her until today. Why she treated me that way. Why she punished me constantly. Why she had that smug face when telling me why I did what I did, which was never accurate, by the way. Nor why I was deeply punished for all of the things in the previous paragraph. She genuinely and truly saw me as this little manipulative monster from birth, and she believed that we were engaged in a constant war for power. It's honestly kind of hilarious that she saw me as this master puppeteer bidding for power, and I was just like three. (laughs) She saw herself in the right. That's impressive. That is impressive. She she saw herself in the right because she assumed all of my actions, even as a hungry newborn, were coming from the same place as hers. A Game of Thrones-like battle of the claim to power. Alexa, play Who's Afraid of Little Old Me. (laughs) (laughs) Me calling out her abuse was a shock because she never saw it as that. She genuinely believed I was bringing it up, not to fix our relationship, but to hurt and manipulate her into bending to my will. They're all power plays. This is me, not Coraline speaking, but I'm just saying people like this will assume everything you're doing is to hurt them, even if you're just living your life, because guess what? They are trying to hurt you. They are trying to manipulate you. They are in a constant struggle of power with you. Mm-hmm. Anyways, that's where pro- that's what projection it's, is. It's literally projection. And you're like, hey, I'm just existing. I didn't I, I don't know why you are having like this internal beef with me. That's not reality. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Anyways, um, in order, here's here's something too that I just when we we're talking about projection, because I think projection people hear projection and they think that people are just throwing their own belief systems on someone else. But before it gets to the projector, it has to go through the filter. Mm-hmm. So it has to come through. Mm-hmm. Whatever they're perceiving in the world, whatever you're saying to them, whatever they are experiencing around them first goes in and it goes in through a filter and it's twisted into something that makes sense to them. And what makes sense to them is manipulation. I just want you to pause. Your fly is down. Is it? I didn't know if you wanted to. Go. I'm going to put Mosby right there. <laughs> but sorry. It is. That's how they do it. What makes sense to them is manipulating. Well, and it also reminds me of the person who said the thing of of calling us, like saying that they think that we're being mean girls. Could it be that that's a bit of a projection because they have had people talk, maybe the way we're talking, but they didn't, here's, here's the difference. We're not talking about a person who has done nothing to anybody. And I'm not talking about it to hurt them. Yes. You're talking about it because it's a lived experience that you've had. And it's real. And it's and and if we're doing it in a jokey way, it's probably because it's an an uncomfortable thing to fucking speak about and to fucking go through and to witness and to see happen. And if you don't laugh, you cry. So which one would be more palatable? Sitting here sobbing about it or pretending it doesn't happen so that later it explodes out of you? Because what do both of those things do to the person who's causing it? Exactly. It's fuel for them. It's power. I'm getting the reaction that I wanted because I'm witnessing you still feel. Yeah. I still have control over you Mm -hmm. in that way. Mm -hmm. And when you don't give them that control anymore and you own it, you own your feelings and your experience in a way that is comfy for you, regardless of whether it's comfy for someone else. It might not be nice. It might not sound nice. Well, here's the thing that I always used to think about, which is 
if you didn't want someone to talk about it, you probably shouldn't have done it. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm my my guess is if it's an action you're not proud of, and you wouldn't want, I don't know, said on a platform, you probably shouldn't have done it. And guess mm-hmm. what? You still aren't doing that. Right. You still are not doing that. We can make little quips and jokes because. It's something horrible that happened and is continuing to happen and it fucking sucks Mm -hmm. to go through. But you still aren't fully giving details, which you don't ever have to and and you you never will. And I don't feel like it. But that's but that's not because of anyone but myself. Yeah. And I this again, this was something that I referenced in the Q&A that I recorded yesterday is. I think about future me and I want future me to look back at present me and be like, damn, you did that thing because fuck again. I look back at past me and I think, fuck, good for you. Mm -hmm. You did the damn thing. It was hard and it was hurtful and it was scary. Yeah. And you did it in a way that you can be proud of. Yeah. You navigated an absolute fucking hurricane. But at the same time, you also don't have to let someone walk all over you and choose to to mm-hmm. change a story, tell your story in a way that it didn't actually happen. Right. Right. Which is but I will do it in a way that I'm proud of. Yeah. I will do it in a way that's true to me. And if that hurts someone else, maybe maybe the content of the story that I tell, you shouldn't have chose. If you wanted the story to be better when it was told, mm-hmm. maybe make the details less shitty. Mhm. Sorry. Sorry. Anyways. Um, okay, sorry. This is about Coraline, not me. No, it's talking not about Coraline's mom. So yes. I can ask Coraline's mom. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know who you are. Sorry. <laughs> sorry. I don't know anything about you. Coraline's mom is an ambiguous person. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> to me in this moment. Um, okay, so she this is back to she mm-hmm. genuinely believed it when she called me an abusive manipulator when I was two. And my grandmother punished me and shamed me when I reached out for help because she believed it too. They all did. That's why they treated me the way they did because they thought I was like them, that everyone was. Yeah. I hope in sharing this that someone else realizes, well, I think you might have helped us, honestly. You might have shown that mirror back at us in a way that was Yeah, because sometimes we say things and I don't hear it. Actually, I was... Again, I was on Reddit and I saw someone talk about the weaponized incompetence episode Mm -hmm. and i'm like what the fuck did i say in that episode that made people Mm -hmm. think they needed to go back and because someone was by the way i was trying to fucking did they say anything about me because i was oh i picked that episode for a reason no well i know that but they said what was said was i missed a lot of chapters where do i go to catch up because i haven't listened for a Mm -hmm. year and somebody commented saying you know, it wasn't real. It didn't really start referencing things till the end of last year. However, if you go back to weaponize incompetence, I think that's when it started. And I'm like, that was in 2022. Mm-hmm. What was being said? Mm-hmm. I just talked about this with Brady too. I'm like, I, I think people who either listen out of order or who are going back and listening to repeated episodes with hindsight, they're like, ah, <laughs> right, ah. Right. But I was curious, what the fuck did I say that would make people go ah? And something I talked about in there um, was an EMDR session that I had like the day before that or something like that week. And it was about my body, my physical appearance. And it's so weird that like I said it, I said it two years ago, but it's making me cry now Mm -hmm. because what I said to myself in the EMDR session was, do you, fuck. Do you feel that? Because my stomach started shrinking whenever I was thinking about myself. And in my head, I heard, do you feel that? You can't breathe. Mm -hmm. You can't breathe. Mm -hmm. And um, then I allowed myself to expand my stomach and I told myself, stop shrinking yourself. Stop being afraid to take up space. And I think maybe people don't understand when they when they call two year olds manipulators or they they call someone a mean girl online. What you're doing is you're threatening. Mm -hmm. Stop taking up space. Stop threatening. My dad calls it a border bully. He's like, stop infringing on my comfort level. Mm -hmm. And so they tell you yourself by being yourself. So they tell you to back up, be less, stop Mm -hmm. infringing on my comfort zone, even if it is allowing yourself to expand how you're comfortable. And 
I didn't realize that although I may have heard myself then, there were still areas where I was shrinking. There were mm-hmm. still areas that made me not able to breathe. Mm-hmm. And it's crazy now where I am in my life to think like, I don't have, there are times where I have moments where I struggle like today, but there was a reason and what was the trigger. Yeah. And so I don't struggle to breathe anymore. I don't struggle with my panic disorder anymore. I almost don't even think I have a panic disorder anymore. I think I have a normal experience with anxiety with actual triggering moments instead of just living in a constant state of it in, in danger. Yeah. yeah. So it, it is crazy that like, again, we said something to you and you reflecting it back to us gave another, another aha moment. moment. Yeah. It's a cyclical cycle of cycles. It really is. <laughs> Um, after all, the most important thing we can do with our stories is to share them and help people feel seen, understood, and less alone like y'all do. So by the way, anything we've ever said that might feel mean girly, we've shared bits of things to make other people feel like they aren't alone. Yeah. Yeah. Period. And I've still never said the person's name Mm -hmm. who has done abusive things to me. And I've had DMs of people being like, just tell me who it is. Like, yeah, fuck them. Who's you can say their name, blah, blah, blah. To me, I never have to. I don't have to give full details. If I ever want to, maybe someday I will. And I'm allowed to change my mind on that. Yeah. I'm allowed to do different things depending on how I feel about it. Because they did it to me. They hurt me. Right. They right. tried to destroy me. Right. And how I react to that is nobody else's business but my own. But anyways, that's not. Well, when that's, you react that's just it. about me. Yeah. That's just about me. Don't flip that onto her, please. Well, no, but, I agree. I agree. I, I, I stand by that. Yeah, I stand <laughs> by that as well. Shit. But that's the, the thing of it is, is that it's so easy to tell people like you, that's making me uncomfortable that you're talking about the pain that someone else caused you. But it's like, imagine you know how it, quiet I've been. <laughs> imagine what hasn't been said. Do you imagine how quiet I'm still being? Imagine what hasn't been said. Yeah. Okay. Um, thank you for everything you do. I don't want to cross any boundaries or assume closeness from strangers or put any unfair pressure on y'all with my praise, but I do need to thank you from the bottom of my heart for being who you are. If you ever wonder about your place in the world or the importance of what you do, I want you to know that you two speaking from your hearts, sharing your stories and being who you authentically are was enough to change my entire life and help heal my heart and close that door for me. Abuse isn't something you tend to get closure on but I feel like I got it. I recently celebrated, me too. I recently celebrated my 29th birthday and one full year of being no contact with my entire origin family. And this epiphany is one of the greatest gifts I've ever gotten. And then parentheses says, you know what? It comes second to my chicken earrings my husband got me. (laughs) They have sparkly cowboy boots. I attached a photo. You know what? (laughs) That's how I know. That you are our people yep. because you like made us cry and then it was like, never mind, chicken, chicken earrings. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, I accidentally clicked the chicken earrings. Thank <laughs> you for explaining my life and brain, providing the answers to the universe, reading my stories and being who you are. The world is a better place because you are in it as yourselves. Oh, thank you. And there's the chicken earrings. I fucking love those chicken <laughs> so earrings. Those and you're dope. fucking beautiful, by the way. So gorgeous. <gasps> That's chicken that wearing is, cowboy boots. <laughs> that That's is so good validation that I desperately needed because it's very hard. Someone, uh, again, sorry, I'm referencing this Q&A that I did yesterday, but one of the questions was about how to be authentically yourself on online or how to have a community. And it's like people connect with people. And if I'm not being honest, it's very easy to tell. And it's also hard for someone to take their walls down Mm -hmm. If they can tell that yours aren't. Yeah. And so it's a very, it's a very tricky dance to figure out how to give you enough to let you know that I want to be vulnerable and that I want to be transparent and I want to show you you're not alone without, without dishonoring myself and my children and my safety by giving too much. Because I, I also don't feel like it's necessary mm-hmm. because at the root of the situation, the details don't matter. Mm-hmm. And, and the thing of it is, is that in this process, 
first of all, we never expected this platform. Oh, yeah. We never expected this job. We never expected this life ever, ever. Yeah. So we didn't know how to prepare for it. We also never expected that moments like this would be Oh, public. how the fuck would I how ever? Would, oh, truly. Yeah. But here's the thing. If we plan to make this a long-term thing, and I hope we can go as long as we can. Yeah. That means we will experience losing loved ones potentially with you guys. That means we will experience potential i mean like grief like you could not imagine potentially in the eyes of you i mean i've already gone through a miscarriage during the podcast yeah. okay so and you're going through what you're going through right now it's a horrible stage stages multiple stages of grief but and it's so life it is life and we are trying to be we're trying to walk the finest line of not giving too much while also feeling like, well, you guys know us well enough that I feel like I should give you some part of my story because it is me. But it's, it is me. It's me, but it's also you. It's also your life. And how fucking lonely and isolating is it to go through grief and feel like no one gets you? That's what I'm saying. So if you're listening, just know that when we do that, I, I just I hope you know that we love you. And at the same time, we hope that you can give us a little bit of grace and um that's to, why to I, like work through this it's stages and it's also something she never expected she'd have to go through oh let yeah. alone go through so fucking publicly nobody knows how to do it the right way how the fuck would you and how would you somebody that's why i was like holy shit all of these responses are so fucking thoughtful and one of them was like we are literally all doing life for the first fucking mm -hmm. time how is anyone I think because people ever look up gonna to know? Us, yeah. They assume that we have it all figured out. And spoiler alert, we fucking really don't. But guess what? We, really we, don't. we talk about shitting ourselves and someone almost shit themselves and thought, you know what? If they love them, if I love them, I need to love me. Yeah. That was a, a quote unquote mistake that I publicly discussed that yeah. we publicly discussed. Mm -hmm. Had I shied away from that, had we never talked about that and highlighted a literal societal <laughs> flaw yeah. in adulthood yeah how would we have these connections and how would you have the opportunity to reflect on it and be like you know what i can get through this it's not that big of a fucking deal if we don't share the ugly yeah, yeah. if we don't share the hard if we don't share the sad yeah it's not easy to do but moments like that as silly as it sounds like pooping yourself as if we don't do that, we don't have the opportunities. The it doesn't sound silly and ha ha when you're going through it. Yes. Shitting yourself is one of the most humiliating and scary things when you're going through yeah. it, especially if you're in a public place. So like to have that moment where you're like, it's fine. It's fine. My girls do it and they're silly goofy and we yes. can laugh about it later with my gal pals. It can be that one moment where you're like, I cannot believe that was. It's traumatic when it, it happens and it's public humiliation. Like but that. to feel like you have someone in your corner. Mm -hmm. And guess what else is traumatic? Getting divorced. Yep. It's traumatic. It's embarrassing. It's hurtful. It's heartbreaking. It is, it is absolutely excruciating. And it brings out the absolute fucking worst in people. Yep. But if you don't have an opportunity to go to your friend mm -hmm. and have a moment of levity. Of laughter. To get through it. Mm -hmm. Then what the fuck is the point? Mm -hmm. How, then you might as well just lay down yes, and let, let it take you under. Kick, kick the shit out of you. And I refuse to do that. And I refuse to let anyone else think that they have to go through it that way. Mm -hmm. What would be the point? Mm -hmm. If I can't get on here and do that with you, I don't want to do the happy stuff. I don't want to do the good stuff. Yep. Because then it's just, it's all performative. And then I'm hiding again. Yes. Yes. So anyway. I hope you had a great time. <laughs> <laughs> I hope this was fun. Happy 250 or whatever the fuck number we're you know on what? now. I feel like we really gave you a little bit of everything. We really did. <laughs> we gave level. you the full ladies and tangents experience. <laughs> That's what this is. The ladies and tangents experience. experience. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed it. Yeah. All well, we were missing was a host story, but we really we'll will. get there. Maybe we'll have one on Patreon. You can, uh, and maybe we won't. I don't know. Go find out. Go get yeah, on Patreon. Patreon.com slash ladies and tangents. Or go uh, buy a ticket to one of our live shows or we definitely do some... host stuff there we definitely do host stuff there <laughs> <laughs> not with each other don't be fucking weird. <laughs> no with the audience <laughs> it's not a ladies and tangents experience without an incest reference that's for sure <laughs> there will be those trust me <laughs> and also um we have merch and there's a sale so go take advantage of that oh, is yeah. it still going on 
It it's over on the eighth. Yeah, so it, fucking go get some merch. Wait, when does this it? come out? No, oh, maybe maybe it's over. Maybe you've missed it. It was yesterday. Sucks to be you, dude. <laughs> Sucks to be you. If there's a place in the world where this actually comes out on the seventh, hurry up. Hurry. <laughs> Anyway, I'm so sorry. Yeah, we love you guys so much. We though. do. We and, do. Uh, we hope you have a, a great time wherever you're at, and we will see you, see you next week. All right, we're out. Goodbye. <laughs>